It's the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is. But it's not just any Ross Tucker Football Podcast. It is a Monster Monday presented by DraftKings, America's number one rated sports book app, and the best fantasy DFS app that I am aware of. It is a new week here on the mighty RTFP, which means a few things. Number one, we like winners. We'll be giving out winners at the end of the week. A new spread the word winner, a new sponsor confirmation email winner, a new YouTube shout out. We love it all. Just engage with the podcast or me on social media, at Ross Tucker NFL, at Ross Tucker Pod. If I see you do that, you will be the spread the word winner potentially with a signed press pass from this season or a football card or a picture, whatever you want. Sponsor confirmation email winner. You'll hear a bunch of good sponsors this week. 100flowers.com, Simply Safe, Raycon Earbuds, Manly Bands, which are awesome. Make sure that you take advantage of one of those awesome offers for Valentine's Day this week. No brainer. And then send it to me and you can win that one. And then the YouTube shout out. Subscribe to youtube.com slash Ross Tucker NFL. And if you comment on any of the videos. I see all the comments that come through. I'll pick one of you to get a cameo style shout out from your boy for anybody you want. Friend, family, fantasy squad. You just want to make funny one of your buddies. I'll tell, I'll say whatever you want. I don't care. It's fun for me. Also should note uh, for at least right now, we are in off season mode, which means we will be three times a week here on the Ross Tucker football podcast. However, We still have a bunch of other shows. College Draft Podcast with Emery Hunt will usually be put out on Mondays. Even Money Podcast will be Tuesdays. Fantasy Feast will be Wednesdays. So you can absolutely still get your 30 minutes of on-demand audio content talking football from me every day, Monday through Friday, and even Saturday, if you'd like. Especially now, you should listen to the College Draft Podcast. Dive in. With Emery, he is excellent. That could be the Tuesday show you listen to on Tuesday mornings. It's Big Show time. The Big Show. Well, Ross, the 2020 season ended with a surprising blowout in the Super Bowl as Tom Brady and the Bucks beat the Chiefs 31-9 to last night. Your thoughts? Well, yeah. Um... I guess I'll start with my overarching thoughts and then kind of go through the game a little bit. My first thought, I guess, Bri, I'm just a little disappointed, maybe a lot disappointed. You know, people always, and by the way, okay, for the record, on the Even Money podcast, I had the under, so that hit, which is great for the Even Money podcast listeners. My preference would have been for the Bucks to win because... Uh, The fact that I was teammates with Tom Brady and my daughters know who Tom Brady is. And I I tweeted this over the weekend at Ross Tucker NFL because I was I said this on TV Friday night. But like my daughters are old enough now that they know who Tom Brady is and the boys in their class know who Tom Brady is. And it's cool that they can say my daddy was teammates with him. So I'm kind of happy that the Bucs won. But more than anything. And Brian, you know this. I mean, you know, this is someone that goes to games all the time. I really just wanted a close game. I really wanted a competitive game. Like, I would have rather had a competitive game and the Bucks lose and even the even money bet be messed up because it hit the over than what we had. It was disappointing. It was anticlimactic. Um, I don't like that. I don't like in the fourth quarter the issue no longer being in doubt. That was a bummer for me. So I was disappointed. By the blowout. I root for close games. I root for drama. I root for excitement. You know, I didn't want to be there in the fourth quarter. Just, all right, get this game over with. Why are you throwing it on third and one bucks? Run it and get the clock over. I mean, yeah, I don't want it to be like that. Uh, so I, I have so many thoughts on the game, Bright. You know, I know a lot of people were disappointed in some of the penalties. I, I would agree. I, I thought that they should have in the first half let them play a little bit more than they did. However, it it wasn't the difference in the outcome of the game. 
I mean, the Chiefs never, ever figured out the Bucs defense, ever. So while I thought there were a couple of penalties that perhaps they didn't need to call, the Chiefs put themselves in those positions. And I tweeted this last night, Bri, you know, there were a couple of questionable or debatable calls, right? I was taught by an offensive line coach once, if the officials are calling it, are calling some questionable holding penalties on you or some debatable holding penalties on you, let there be no question. Let there be no debate. Don't put it in a situation where they can throw the flag, right? And in every situation, Traverius Ward on the one that got intercepted or Breland tripping Mike Evans or Tyron Matthew on the goal line, don't don't hit Mike Evans at the goal line, Tyron. I mean, it probably was not catchable, but don't – he was eight yards downfield. Even if it's not pass interference, it's illegal contact. Don't hit him. So – and by the way, the last two, the Breland penalty and the Tyron Matthew penalty, neither one of those ever happen if the Chiefs don't call timeout on third and two. The Bucs weren't even really trying to score. The Chiefs helped them out. So while I think people were fair to be disappointed in a couple of the calls in the first half, that's what happens if you're the Chiefs and you play as physically as they do. They thought it would be Super Bowl officiating and they would let them let things play, let it go a little bit more. And they didn't. They called it tighter. And the Chiefs didn't adjust. And that's on them. And then they put themselves in those positions over. And then they did stupid stuff like lining up in the neutral zone on a field goal, McCole Hardman, or Chris Jones bopping Ryan Jensen in the face. They always get the second guy. You know, just the Chiefs lost their cool. The Chiefs had mental error after mental error. The Chiefs got beat up up front both sides of the ball. The Chiefs got out coached. I mean, both sides, right? You know, Spagnolo was okay, but he didn't adjust enough. And the Bucs ran the ball very effectively. I thought they could have run it even more and ran play action off of it. Guys were open. Spags didn't change up his game plan. Part of the reason why they got a bunch of penalties. And then the other side, forget it. I mean, Todd Bowles, I think I tweeted, lived rent-free in Andy Reid's head. You know, Todd Bowles ran more too deep safety than he did all season to not get beat over the top. He blitzed less than he had all season. And by the way, he did both of those things because he knew his front four was going to be able to get pressure without having to blitz because of the Chiefs beat up O-line and because of the Bucks front four. He knew that. He didn't need to blitz. But Andy Reid never adjusted. 92% five-man protection. 48 of the 52 snaps. The third highest of any team since next-gen stats was tracking it back in 2016. So Andy Reid, let's be honest, I love the guy. He got out coached in a major, major way. The Bucs won the game in the trenches. That was pretty clear. The, their own line protected Brady. They ran it pretty well. Their defensive line, the Bucs totally dominated the Chiefs' O-line. The Chiefs settled for field goals. I got to tell you, Brian, this was the only scenario for the game that I could not conjure, that, that I could not have imagined, and that is – the Bucs blowing out the Chiefs and the Chiefs not scoring a single solitary touchdown. Wow. I, I just, Chiefs had to settle for field goals. Even when they got in the red zone or whatever, they settled for field goals. Bucker was hitting bombs. Brady was unbelievable in the first half. 80% completion percentage. Three touchdowns. Devin White was a stud all game. Levante David, I thought, actually did a decent job on Travis Kelsey, even though Travis's numbers ended up being decent later. Mahomes was absolutely running for his life, couldn't find people that were open. I mean, it was like 
it was tough to watch. It was like the same play over and over again. Mahomes scrambling, running around, trying to chuck it. I mean, he had some ridiculous throws in those situations, but they kept taking away his first read. He he was uncomfortable. Andy Reid couldn't figure it out. Patrick Mahomes couldn't figure it out. And, you know, people have all kinds of excuses for why Brady was able to have the success he's had over the years. It's the defense. It's cheating. It's Belichick. He's lucky. I mean, at this point, I don't care if he's just sprinkling magic pixie dust, okay, in the locker room. It works. He elevates the people around him, period. And if you ever needed more evidence of that, this season was exactly that. It was a masterful performance by so many people on the Bucks. But yes, Brady deserves a lot of credit. So does Todd Bowles. I mean, his, his defense, nine points, no touchdowns against Andy Reid, Tyree Kill, Travis Kelsey, and Patrick freaking Mahomes. That was some security right there by Todd Bowles. Speaking, by the way, of security, you guys know this is personal for me. Simply Safe Home Security delivers award winning 24 7 protection. With Simply Safe, you don't just get an arsenal of cameras and sensors, which you do get, which is awesome. You get the best professional monitors in the business. When you go to bed at night and you secure your house, it's a great feeling. When you go away and you come back and you know that your house was still secured, it's a great, great feeling. Right now, my listeners get a free home security camera, free, when you purchase a Simply Safe system at simplysafe.com slash Tucker. Here's the deal, though. You get a 60-day risk-free trial, so there's nothing to lose. Visit simplysafe.com slash Tucker for your free security camera today. That's simplysafe.com slash Tucker. You know why they give you the 60-day risk-free trial? Because once you have it, you'll realize how much you like it, and they know you'll keep it. They're smart. Simplysafe.com slash Tucker. Um, I will say this, Bri. In terms of like the game flow going through it, you know, early on, people forget the Chiefs had the lead in this game. Frank Clark made a couple plays early for the Chiefs. Patrick Mahomes' legs were a big factor. I mean, he seemed confused and under duress, and he was like one for six or something. But you know what? He was running for first downs. I mean, he was he was keeping the Chiefs alive, and they got that field goal. But then, I mean, really, the score could have even been worse. Leonard Fournette on the duo runs and play-action passes lead to Gronk touchdown number one. I thought Byron Leftwich, the Bucks OC was masterful on that drive. Then the Bucks marched, same thing, running, play action. But then how about the Chiefs? Good for them, man, stoning Ronald Jones three times on the goal line. We also ha almost had a big man touchdown with Joe Haig, but I think it was Hitchens made a great play. Give Hitchens, he punched that ball out. That was tremendous. But Ronald Jones stoned three times on the goal line by the Chiefs. They should have had Fournette in there. A couple of those runs were not great by Jones. I mean, just not great. But kudos to the Chiefs. That was amazing. But even so, then the Chiefs punter, Tommy Thompson, dropped the first punt, then shanks the second one. And that's when the Chiefs' penalties really started to hurt them. You know, they had, uh, I think it was a third down where they got the first down by penalty. And then Hardman lines up offsides on the field goal. It was going to be 10-3. But he lines up offside. What are you doing, McCole Hardman? And Hamilton on the other side might have been offsides too. That leads to Gronk touchdown number two, which was a frozen rope from Brady. Chiefs had a long drive at the end of the first half. But again, they settled for a field goal. And then the game really ended, in my mind, when the Chiefs had those questionable timeouts at the end of the first half. I thought they were overly aggressive. You can't call timeout on third and two. You just can't do that. You're helping the other team. That led to the bomb 
from Brady. What are they doing allowing Mike Evans to get behind him? Breland has the P.I. And that led to the A.B. touchdown after Tyron Matthew had the P.I. on Evans again. Bucks up 21-6 at halftime, then it was kind of all she wrote. I mean, even when the Chiefs had that nice drive to start the second half with Clyde Edwards-Hilaire, they settled for a field goal to go up 21-9. Bucks answer Fournette, Gronk, back and forth. Long four net touchdown, 28 to nine. At that point, it was like, yeah, I don't think the Chiefs are going to figure this one out. I thought after 21 9, maybe, but after the Bucks went right down for that touchdown, 28 9, I was like, nope. Then Winfield had the tipped interception, led to a field goal after the bad snap by Jensen. 31 9, like midway through, I think, the third quarter, no more scoring. No more scoring. Every play after that was the same. Mahomes, nobody open, scrambling all around the field, desperate throws all second half. His receivers can't catch it, and boom, that was the game. Kudos to everybody on the Bucks, in particular Tom Brady, who once again put to bed so many misnomers about other guys being the GOAT or – Belichick being the reason that he won. I mean, all that stuff, it's over. Frankly, in my mind, it's been over, but now it's really over. Tom Brady now has more Super Bowl championships than any NFL franchise. He is the franchise. Speaking of more, don't be the person that forgets to get the loved ones in your life flowers. In particular, the lovely ladies in your life. Head over to 100flowers.com right now. They got a last minute offer for you guys. Get 24 multicolored roses for $24.99 or upgrade to 24 red roses for $10 more. This is an unbelievable offer from 100 Flowers. 24 multicolored roses for $34.99 or upgrade to 24 red roses for $10 more. Listen, even if you're going to Take them out to dinner. Hey, I'm not going to judge. Or you're going to get takeout. Or you got something else special planned. Or you got them a story from my front. Like, I, I don't care what else you've done. You should still get them flowers. Like, she doesn't listen, so I can say this. My wife, she's got, I sent flowers to the office. She's going to get flowers in her office. And she's going to like them. And she's going to look at them for two weeks. And be like, that was nice. And it's just like, it just brightens the room and it just brings a smile to their face. It's a nice smell. To order 24 multicolored roses for $34.99 or upgrade to 24 red roses for only $10 more, go to 1-800-Flowers.com, click the radio icon, enter code football. That's 1-800-Flowers.com, code football. This offer expires Wednesday. I think I might be able to squeeze one more person into our YouTube show, which we're going to do this week. So... First person, first person this week to go to 100flowers.com, enter code football. You'll be the last person in the YouTube only football feedback with Ross Tucker show this week. Tuck takes. Decent amount of uh, takes to get to today. So let's start with the news out of Kansas City. Chiefs outside linebacker coach Britt Reed was involved in an accident late on Thursday that left a child in critical condition. This is a tough one, a tough one to talk about on a lot of levels. You know, I've seen the pictures of the five-year-old girl who is in critical condition in the hospital. That hits close to home for obvious reasons. Uh, extremely, extremely disappointing and unfortunate Britt Reed has had a history of substance abuse. I believe he told the officers that he had two or three drinks, also takes Adderall. I don't know if there's some reaction between those. Whatever it is, it's it's not okay. It'll never be okay. Uh, he should probably serve time for this. I don't think it affected the Chiefs game plan 
because the Chiefs game plan had already been long, long hay in the barn at that point. But it certainly couldn't have helped. Let's put it that way. What really matters here is thoughts and prayers for that family and what they're going through right now. And hopefully that young lady can come out of this and there should be justice for what Britt Reed did here. Tux takes. Football news since Friday included a report that Eagles quarterback Carson Wentz will be traded in the next few days and that the Packers have hired Joe Barry as their defensive coordinator. So the Wentz thing is fascinating to me. I really thought the Eagles would bring him back. In my mind, I feel like, I don't know, there's a 50-50 chance you can get Wentz back to his MVP form. 50% chance he'll never be able to get back there. And I'd say probably a 50-50 chance. I think that Jalen Hurts can be a, a good starting quarterback in the NFL. I thought bring them both back, let the new coach work with both of them, and see which one of those two 50-50 propositions hits, hopefully. Maybe they both do, unlikely. Maybe they both don't, possible. But pretty good chance that one of them shows himself to be a solid starting quarterback. The thing I, I, I can't wait to see what the Eagles get in compensation here. Because most people believe the Rams had to give up an extra first-round pick for Matthew Stafford really to get rid of the Jared Goff contract. Well, if that's the case, it's pretty remarkable that the Eagles might get something of value to get rid of Wentz because he was a lot worse this year than Jared Goff was. So that would be a, a, a real coup, actually, for the Eagles if they get something of value for Wentz at this point compared to what the Rams had to do with golf. And as for the Packers hiring Joe Barry, they wanted Jim Leonard. Jim Leonard didn't want the job. I said to Packers fans, careful what you wish for. When they let go of Mike Pettin, Joe Barry's history is of coordinating horrific defenses. Absolutely terrible. So good luck. Like I said, I said this last week when they let go of him, good luck. If you think Joe Barry is going to have a better defense, than Mike Pettin had the last half of the year? I doubt it. Tux takes. We also found out who the newest members of the Pro Football Hall of Fame are. They include Peyton Manning, Woodson, Megatron, Fanica, John Lynch, also Tom Flores and Bill Nunn. Right. Flores and Bill Nunn were like the uh, contributor categories or – coach categories, whatever, not non-players, right? Um, so congratulations to all these guys. There's not a single one of them that I would sit here and say, that guy doesn't deserve it. That guy doesn't deserve it. I will just say that I believe a lot of the other guys are deserving as well. The two I've talked about quite a bit over the years and still feel very strongly about are Tony Baselli and Richard Seymour. The only reason why Baselli isn't in is because he didn't play as long as some of these other guys. That's the knock on him, the only knock on him. And then for Seymour, his numbers aren't as good as some of these other guys because of the defense that he played in. I suppose there are arguments that Tony didn't play long enough or that Richard Seymour, he still should have put up bigger numbers. I think I've made those points a lot on the show. I guess I'll just agree to disagree with those people. Tux takes. And last but not least, we know the awards winners from the NFL honors on Saturday night. Aaron Rodgers, the MVP. Aaron Donald, Defensive Player of the Year. Derrick Henry, the Offensive Player of the Year. Alex Smith gets the Comeback Player of the Year. Russell Wilson, the Walter uh, Walter Payton Man of the Year. Kevin Stefanski, Coach of the Year. Justin Herbert, Offensive Rookie of the Year. And Chase Young gets the Rookie of the Year on the defensive side. You know, Brad, I, I don't really have a big issue with any of these. I really don't. 
The the one I probably disagree with, I probably would have given the defensive player of the year to TJ Watt. I think you can make an easy argument for Aaron Donald. He's unbelievable. But TJ Watt had better numbers across the board. That's got to count for something. I mean, and TJ Watt gets double teamed a lot too. Okay. So I would have gone with TJ Watt, I think, for defensive player of the year. But again, it's not like I'm gonna sit here and say anybody that voted for Aaron Donald's ridiculous. Like he's he's obviously very deserving. Uh, I told you guys for a while Kevin Stefanski was going to be the coach of the year. He's an absolute stud. Speaking of studs, guys, for the better part of their lives, our better halves have been fantasizing about the perfect wedding ring. You know, cut, clarity, carrot, color, etc. Manly Bands is here to rescue you from an otherwise hellish band buying experience. I got one of these. It is amazing. They send you the manly ring sizer. You put it on, you see, you know how it fits. Then you got like 10 to choose from. Collections like the Chris Harrison or Jack Daniels whiskey barrel collection. Awesome. One of you guys, he already got one and emailed me and love it. They're very cool. They're very affordable. There's a 30-day exchange policy and a free warranty. I like just having a second one now because my first one's pretty beat up from wearing it when I work out because I work out a lot, obviously. Uh, But no, you guys should really, really consider this. These things are awesome. If you want an upgrade, if you want a second one, if you're in the market, Go to manlybands.com slash Ross and enter promo code Ross. That's manlybands.com slash Ross, code Ross for 20% off Manly Bands. The best damn rings, period. 20% off manlybands.com slash Ross. Let's do an email, Brian. Ever wanted to ask an NFL player a question? Well, here's your chance. It's time to ask Ross. Okay, so the email address is ross at rostucker.com. That's how you can always get at me with your sponsor confirmation emails, if you rate and review the show, anything like that. Anytime you want to get in touch with me, right? If you want to take advantage of 100 Flowers offer and be the last person in our, our, our first YouTube show, our debut YouTube show, football feedback, YouTube show is basically going to be like this. It's going to be like Ask Ross. Except for those of you that either see the social media clips or watch at youtube.com slash Ross NFL, you're going to be like where Steve Fezzik is or Greg Cosell is or Andrew Brand is. You're going to be on the show with me. like, And you're going to tell me your name and where you're from and how you listen. And I'm going to say, hey, great to meet you. And then you're going to ask me whatever question you want. It's going to be awesome. I think you guys are going to really enjoy hearing the questions from other Tuckheads, other listeners. And also hearing how they listen or how they started. It's, it's going to be awesome. Really looking forward to it. Again, I'll, I'll post that up on YouTube when we have it. What do you got, Bright? Hey, Ross, I love the podcast. Keep up the great work. My question is, what happened that you decided to go into the media after your playing career was over? If you have any, I would love an Eagles press pass. That is from Austin. Thank you, Austin. Can't remember what sponsor Austin took advantage of, but remember, if you take advantage of any of them, Send me the email. I guarantee to read and respond to your question at some point. So, Austin, I, I've i told the story before. Growing up, I wanted to be a broadcaster. I wanted to write for Sports Illustrated or be a broadcaster. That's what I wanted to do. Then you get to Princeton, and people don't really talk about it. It's more like finance. I accepted a job with Lehman Brothers on Wall Street. Thankfully, I got signed by the Washington football team and made it and had a seven-year career. Towards the end of my career, I guess I just kind of thought I would do something other than football, other than media. But I thought I wanted to do something, something with football. Even if I just called like the Princeton football games on the radio, I had to have some football in my life, some tie-in. Thankfully, it's my like my whole life, which is amazing, and I'm extremely blessed. 
But I went to the NFL's broadcasting boot camp there, Austin. The first one they ever had went pretty well for me. I made some contacts. I told Peter King afterwards that I really wanted to write. He loved the idea of me writing. I got hurt in a preseason game. I wrote a story for Sports Illustrated, MMQB, a Monday morning quarterback, about my career being over. Got job offers right away, man. It was crazy. Sirius XM, Sports Illustrated, Comcast, right away. And the Princeton football games on the radio. I had a media career one week after I got hurt, two weeks after I got hurt. Extremely, extremely fortunate. There's a longer story I can tell at some point, but that's the short version. If someone wants the longer version, let me know. But that's the short version. And uh, I have not looked back. I guess I was 28 then. Now I'm, I'll be 42 next month. Pretty crazy that I will have been a broadcaster for twice as long as I was a player soon. Seven years as a player, 14 years as a broadcaster. And oh, by the way, Tom Brady, still playing football, still winning Super Bowls, still not riding off into the sunset. He still said he's coming back. He's not retiring. It is crazy. Shout outs to Pizza Boy Brewing, Sportaculture, SteakhouseSports.com, Vision Comics with an X, and DinerDepot.com. We'll record the College Draft Podcast this morning as well with some Super Bowl takeaways as well as Emery will go through the process of how he evaluates these college prospects. I think those of you that are looking to learn more about football, you'll really enjoy this. We'll do the Even Money Podcast tomorrow. Steve and I, our bets both came through. We both finished plus seven for the season. Another year in the black. Very, very proud of that. For those of you listening to that, Wednesday, Fantasy Feast. We'll kind of have a recap and start to get into best ball a little bit. And we'll have a special guest on Wednesday, perhaps in addition to Andrew Brandt. We'll talk to Greg Cosell about what the Super Bowl coaches film showed on Thursday. What an awesome week we have here. Glad to have you guys aboard. You are the best listeners in the galaxy. I think we're done here. Thanks for listening to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. Make sure to also subscribe to the Fantasy Feast, Even Money, Business of Sports, and College Draft. All available at Apple Podcasts, RossTucker.com, or wherever podcasts can be found.